whatever your passion is, whatever like your thing is, I want to give you like a permission slip to use your voice in that area because our voices as introverts, like even though it's not our natural way to go out there and say stuff, our voices are needed because we bring a different perspective. We bring, you know, this quiet strength that you talk about. Like we, we bring this and it is a different way of seeing the world. And if we can kind of incorporate that more into like our collective dialogue, I think that's a win-win for everybody. Hello and welcome to episode 188 of the Quiet and Strong podcast, especially for introverts. I'm your host, David Hall, and the creator of quietandstrong.com. This is a weekly podcast dedicated to understanding the strengths and needs of introverts, along with strategies for success. Introversion is not something to fix, but to be embraced. Normally, while there are each episode on a Monday, be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform, leave a review or a rating. That would mean a lot to me and also help others find the show. Tell a friend about the podcast and help get the word out there that introversion is a beautiful thing. Alexon Callahan founded Small Adventures Communications, a public relations agency that helps nonprofits build smart public relations plans that drive real results. Since 2006, she has provided PR counsel to global organizations, acting as both a trusted advisor and a tactician. She has designed and led campaigns ranging from local event promotion to statewide advocacy to national health behavior change, all with successful results. In nearly 20 years of working with well-known nonprofits, she has built communications and public relations plans that have changed legislation, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the mission, driven health behavior change, and brought fresh event participants and donors to the table. She also uses her 20 years of PR expertise, a lifetime of introversion, and successful business experience to build a systematic approach to move business leaders from complete PR novices to comfortable beginners and beyond in ways that build their businesses and still feel like themselves. All right. Well, welcome to the Quiet and Strong podcast, Alexon. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So good to have you on today. So we're going to talk about the work you do in public relations. But also, before we do that, let's just talk about yourself and your journey as an introvert to the work that you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that I've always, you know, like tended towards introversion. I am very much the type of person who needs, you know, that alone time to recharge. I remember as a kid, like, you know, big family parties and gatherings, I was definitely the one taking my book to a tree to go like have a little bit of alone time amid all that wild celebration. So that's always been a big piece of my personality. In public relations, one of the biggest skills that we always utilize is writing. So I've been a lifelong writer and fan of words. And so just kind of naturally when I went to school, I was in the business school, found my way to PR and just absolutely love this sector of business. It's so beautiful to me to kind of have the professional like need to pull together relationships, tell stories, just like find opportunities. That's something that as an introvert, you know, I'm good at observing things and seeing things. So that's the field I fell into. I spent the bulk of my 20-year career at nonprofit organizations leading communications and PR. And then about three years ago, started my own PR firm, Small Adventures Communications. And it's been a pretty cool ride. Like lots of lots of things that I've learned about owning a business, about myself, about being an introvert that I've been able to leverage in new ways. Yeah. So when did you put the term introvert? You know, when did you apply that to yourself? How did you discover it? And, you know, was it something that you had to embrace? Yeah, I mean, I would say I I kind of became aware of it probably in college or grad school, you know, with like a Myers-Briggs type of test. Like that idea of being an introvert just gave words to feelings and needs and, you know, like my nature that I'd always had. So 
in public relations, a lot of folks, you know, there's, of course, both types of people, but I think people generally associate publicists and people in PR with being a little bit more extroverted. They're, you know, you think of people being a little pushier when they're pitching. You think of people hosting lots of events and schmoozing, and that's not my style at all. So in feeling at home professionally, it definitely, you know, it took seeing a lot of strong introverted mentors, you know, embracing that side of themselves and knowing that that was a great, like that there are strengths within this nature I have that I can bring to this professional world and and be better for it. So it it definitely took a while to lean into these strengths. Yeah. So what is a strength or two that you have because you're an introvert? I think that my favorite introvert strength is that you know, because we're not always in the thick of things focused on doing, right? Like we sit back, we process, and that power of observation is incredible. I love that, you know, I can kind of see things, I can notice emotions and trends. I can put all these observations of what I'm seeing, like in the big wide world, in the organization with individuals, put them together, and especially working the way that I do and like finding mutually beneficial relationships and strengthening them and telling stories like that power of observation, being able to pull it all together has led to some pretty cool stuff. So that power of observation is absolutely my favorite introvert superpower. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, on this show, we talk about strengths. And you'll probably hit on some more strengths as we go. We talk about strategies for success, and we'll talk about how you've leaned into your introverted strengths for the work that you do. But also, we bust myths. And so is there a myth about introversion you want to bust today? Yeah, I think my the, intro, the introverted myth that I'd like to bust is that introverts are all shy. Like my whole life, I've always said, like, oh, I'm shy until you get to know me. And I didn't realize that that's because, you know, I'm not really all that shy with introverts. We know it takes us a while to warm up. You know, it's about finding interesting things to discuss with folks. It's about building that one on one, you know, connection. It's never going to be I'm never going to walk into a room full of people and connect with all of them. That's (laughs) really overwhelming for us. So it's about I think that myth that we're shy. No, we're not. We just have a different energy level and a different need for connection. It's not like one to many, it's, it's one to one. And once we, once we connect, it's all good, just like anybody else. Yeah. And often it's, we want deeper connections. Yeah. And that's really important to us. And so it's just funny. And I also regularly bust the myth that, you know, introverts don't like people. That's ridiculous. Right. It's just like, we might want social activities in different doses and different settings, but Everybody likes people. <laughs> yeah. In different amounts, yes. <laughs> In different amounts. Yeah, for sure. So tell us some, just tell for those that might not know, give us a, a nutshell of what's all involved in public relations. Yeah. So I think when we think about public relations and the folks that we see doing that like in shows and movies, you know, we get it's really easy to associate it with a lot of tactical stuff. So it, you know, we think that it's putting on events, it's spinning the news. It's like, you know, putting out press releases and managing crises. And it is all of that. But the way that I approach PR is really foundational. So what public relations is at the, you know, at its core is is strategically building mutually beneficial relationships between yourself or your business and the people who can help you achieve your goals. And when you think about it like that, like it is such an introvert sweet spot because we, you know, are great at building relationships. We're great at like, you know, kind of finding those deeper connections, those deeper benefits that we can have or our organizations can have with each other. And so it's about just kind of taking that introvert strength that we have as individuals and doing it at a larger scale. So it is telling stories in the news. It is positioning, you know, organizations and individuals as experts at what they do. But, you know, it's it's doing it in a really authentic way. And a big piece of what I do, because I work specifically with introverted business owners to feel more comfortable talking about their business and positioning themselves. It's really important that when, you know, we've got introverted business owners who are experts at what they do and have been doing it for years, like I work with them to use public relations to 
be a tool, right? Like that's all it really is. It's just a set of tools to be able to comfortably share their story, whether it's through social media or through earned media or speaking opportunities. Like these things don't need to be big and scary. And so it's all about finding ways to build it into your boundaries, build it into your nature. So it feels comfortable. It's not draining. It doesn't feel icky or like you're having to wear an extroverted mask when you're talking about your business or the things that you can do or your expertise in a field. It should feel natural. It should feel like you. And it should be all aimed towards building those mutually beneficial relationships. So that's yeah, kind of what I do. <laughs> Absolutely. And you talked about something a bit ago. Absolutely. There's going to be extroverts and introverts doing PR. And that's another myth that we bust on this show. It's, you know, a lot of times there isn't a job that's for introverts or extroverts. I think most jobs can be done by an introvert or extrovert. Just they might go about it a little bit differently. And what have you seen that's really different from how an extrovert might do PR versus an introvert? Oh, that's a good question. I think, you know, there's there's so many different differences yeah. between the way we approach things. I see it tactically. I see like my extroverted colleagues are the first to say, well, let's do a big launch event. Let's throw a party. Let's make a big thing. And whereas my tactical approach can sometimes be more, let's find that individual story. Let's position this feature story. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an event, but let's find that perfect story, that human story within this. So just like that different, you know, approach to things, not that either one is right or wrong, like there's a place for all of these things, but I, that is probably one of the biggest differences that I see, but I totally agree with you. I, I hate it when people say, oh yeah, all the accountants are introverts, and like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like all the, all the actors are extroverts. Like it's no, we all can do different things. It just looks a little different. Yeah. It's funny. The, the acting comes up a lot on this show and 50% of the population are introverts mm -hmm. and at least if not more, 50% of actors are introverts. And it's yeah. just, it, it's just, it's just like what we're talking about. You're going to do PR a little differently than an extroverted colleague. The introverted actor is going to approach things differently, but you know, they have a performance they want to do. It's just, they might just do it a little bit differently. It, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, you could say, oh, this actor is an introvert and people, oh no, they can't be, but it, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, um, it is. And it, I think it's important too, that people realize that it's not, it's not always, you might not be able to tell the difference, right? Between an introvert and an extrovert just by interacting with them. You think that you can, you think the shy, quiet, like the quiet one is going to be the introvert, but introverts can also like, be verbose and share things and be out there. It's just that comfort level. And what are you doing before and after, you know, yeah. to recharge? <laughs> yeah. And you, it's, you can't see what's going on in their head. Yeah. You know, and I know some very loud and outspoken introverts, but they're introverts because they're deep thinkers. They process mm -hmm. things internally. They need time to think often. So yeah, very good points. So, you know, your story You've been doing PR for other people for the last 20 years, and recently you started with your own business. Tell us about that switch. Yeah, it's been really fascinating because for, you know, for 20 years, it was my goal. I worked for large public health organizations, so I was positioning some of the smartest people like in health fields, you know, people with doctors and loads of acronyms behind their names as experts. You know, these were the folks you would see on the Today Show or in USA Today or Wall Street Journal. Like these were, these are true top tier experts. And I was very comfortable with that. I love, you know, helping other people shine. And so three years ago, when I started my business, I found that to keep growing at the pace that I was at the start, like I needed to get out there. I needed to know more people than, you know, are in my core group, more people than like colleagues and current clients. I needed to expand. And so that required me to kind of apply everything I've learned in over 20 years to myself. And it, you know, I had the tools, I had like the framework to do all this, but that didn't necessarily make it the easiest thing. So like, I always 
you know, whether I'm working with clients or myself, I begin with messaging, like, who are you? What are you doing? What is the point? (laughs) And really like build that message, build that story first. And then we're able to take it outside once you're comfortable with it. Because I think as introverts, like one thing that I really rely on is having like this library of stories and library of anecdotes and like, you know, messaging in my head, because when I can just tap into it, like in a flow state, instead of having to think about every word that I'm saying, I do a lot better. So it's building all of that, all of that framework for myself, figuring out what those words are that I feel comfortable with. And then how do I take it, take that story beyond my current audience and build in boundaries and time for me to like have that processing time, have that recharge time. You know, like when I'm coming on to podcasts like this, like one thing I love about coming on podcasts is that often like you get the questions in advance, which for an introvert is amazing because it gives me that processing time. Like you said, you know, I can sit the night before and like jot down my notes. What do I want to mention here and there? And it just makes the whole thing feel a lot more comfortable and so much less draining than an interview where you don't have any chance to prepare. So those are some, some good lessons, some good boundaries I've learned for myself about what works for me. And I, it's, it's been really fun to kind of then take that to other folks because, you know, if I, as an introverted business owner with a background in PR struggled with this, then definitely introverted business owners in other spaces are going to need these tools too. So that's, that's what I'm focusing on right now. And it's been really fun. Yeah. So. This is really, these two topics go together, but they're separate. So you mentioned storytelling and preparation, and we definitely need to do preparation to have our stories ready because as introverts, often our skill isn't thinking on our feet. We we're, we are great thinkers. We have great imaginations. It just, we process things in a longer amount of time. So I have two questions really. It's tell us about the value of stories in all this work, like being on a podcast, you know, promoting yourself on a podcast or giving a presentation or in other areas where, you know, in PR work, what's the value of stories? And then let's talk a little bit more about preparation, both with stories and in other aspects. So what, why, why are stories so important? So I always lean on this statistic that stories are 22 times more memorable than facts. So I could go up and I could, you know, tell people like, oh, I've secured, you know, like more than a thousand media stories over my career. I've secured more than a billion media impressions over my career. And like, cool, but what does that mean? (laughs) You know, that doesn't, that doesn't mean a whole lot to most people. It doesn't even mean a whole lot in PR circles, honestly. But what what do you do? How have you helped people? You know, like, so being able, when you can illustrate that with a story and you can talk about how, you know, you help business owners feel more comfortable and authentic getting out there, sharing their story, positioning themselves as the experts that they are, then that's something that people remember that they can identify with. So I love to use stories. Like I don't shy away from facts with that background in public health. And a lot of my clients these days are still health organizations. So like we love our statistics, you know, one in 10 and 20% and like all these things to give the global picture of like risk or impact, but that cannot stand alone. So we have to identify those stories, identify those instances where we're really illustrating that statistic in action, and then talk about, you know, how we can collectively, like, kind of change the change the future, change the narrative and the way that things move forward. Like I said, a lot of the work I do, in addition to working with entrepreneurs, is in public health. So it's around things like, you know, reducing incidence of heart disease and cancer and stuff. So we're talking a lot about how so many people are impacted we tell an individual story and then we move on to how can we, how is the organization taking action? How can you as an individual take action too? So find stories can be a nice way to remember those statistics, really like internalize them, even if you don't remember the numbers, because the numbers aren't what's important. It's how it's impacting people. Yeah. I was going to say the second question, remind me of what it was, because I got so into that one. Just, it just, so I know like for myself and others, I have some beautiful stories in my head, but 
as you were saying, you need to gather them ahead of time mm-hmm. and have them ready for that interview or, or that speech or presentation. And so you need to, and, and, and preparation is the key to our success as introverts, because mm-hmm. again, you know, we're not always good at thinking on the spot. Although, you know, I will say like for you talking about public relations or introversion, you don't have a problem thinking on the spot because you're, you've already done the thinking, right? And, yeah. you know, I joke it, that I could talk about introversion all day, but there's other things where you, you need, need to prepare and get your stories together and get the things that you want to talk about together ahead of time for, for many things. So talk about that, the preparation that's needed. Yeah, I think that's super important for us as introverts. I know I use it as a business owner, like I prepare how I present myself when I'm out and about. But even when I was an employee, like preparing for, you know, small meetings, big meetings, like what is, what are we, what am I trying to say? Because when I have to think on my feet, it never comes out as clearly as I want it to. Like I've got it all up here, you know, but taking those couple extra minutes to sit down before you talk to somebody or before you go into a meeting and really like identifying what it is you're trying to do, like the observations you've made that like, you know, kind of strengthen your point. When you are able to do that, it really can be so much more powerful because I think people can see the difference too when we're introverts thinking on our feet versus when we're introverts who are reaching into our depths and knowing like, this is truly what I think, you know, it it can appear a little disjointed if you're not prepared. So I love to focus on those messages in advance. I've got like, you know, my little library in my brain of business stories and, and, you know, other things that I'm able to pull from. And I find that that is so, so helpful. It's something I've focused on a lot more in the past year. And I have seen business growth because of it, because I'm just able to present myself more in line with what my expertise is versus appearing a little flaky, a little, you know, all over the place. It's just that that difference is preparation. Yeah. Do you have something you do to gather your stories and have them ready? Yeah, I use I so I have a messaging framework. Um, like I said, a lot of the public relations work that I do, it's you know, just to kind of back up a bit, I I like to say that public relations warms the room. Like it's not sales, but it's kind of making things easier for sales or in the nonprofit space, like donations or advocacy work or whatever. So all of it is designed to get people to act at the end of the day. So I use a messaging framework that uses the acronym ACT and that A is for awareness. So that's where we really focus on like the current situation, like I said, or that statistic. The C is where we build credibility by sharing a story And then that T is for together. So that's like the next step forward. It's really having a clear call to action to make sure that people know how they can be a part of the solution or be a part of what you're offering next. I find that that framework works in so many different situations. And I I really love it. It's all about having that common thread, you know, so you're showing the global picture, an individual instance, and then how you can be a part of this. It it really is helpful. Yeah. So. What do you say to the client that maybe be that would be nervous about coming on a podcast or or doing a speech? And I do want to say that that's not all introverts because some introverts are wildly confident and some that aren't can absolutely gain that confidence. And that's what this show is all about, because I definitely was shy earlier in my life. I am not anymore. And for me, it was just understanding my introversion that gave me confidence. So for those that aren't confident, what do you say to them about going on a podcast or giving a speech? Yeah, I think for me, one of the things that made a huge difference was, especially when it came to public speaking, I did a speech about almost a year ago. And when I was asked to do it, like my stomach froze, I was terrified, but I said yes anyway, because it was a great opportunity. And to prepare for that, I found a speech coach who was also an introvert, which was really, really helpful because there was an understanding of like, you know, how important preparation is, how important taking some alone time before the speech, after the speech was, that was really, really helpful. So finding somebody who, you know, 
can help you through the process of putting yourself out there, whether it's in a speech or an earned media, who's also an introvert can be really helpful because they're going to understand your, you know, natural, like resistance to some things. I think yeah, I, the, oh, sorry. that's, yeah, that's key because the advice is different. So I've, I learned and I don't get nervous when I when I speak. I could speak in front of a large crowd. I used to, oh, absolutely. And I don't yeah. get nervous doing this podcast. But what I learned was, if I looked at my extroverted colleague, my preparation was so much different than theirs. And an extroverted advice often doesn't work for us introverts. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it might just be well, just get out there. Whereas it's like, oh, you need to do your preparation, and often. We learn best from fellow introverts. Now, we can learn from an extrovert if they understand introversion, and many do, you know, but that that's key is is they need to understand how we work and how we work best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I found in preparing for speeches or like, you know, workshops or anything like that, where there's a lot going on, but you are the, the main like deliverer of a message, I found... I, and I don't know if it's an introvert thing or, or what, but like, I can't read my notes and have a natural sounding conversation at the same time. So that's where that like preparation piece comes in and like having that messaging ready. I'm not memorizing a script, but I am memorizing the key points of my story so that I can hit it in a flow state instead and like not really be having to think about it because I've got the muscle memory. I've told the story a couple of times. Like I record myself practicing speeches a lot. (laughs) <laughs> and listen back to them just to ingrain my brain with it because looking at notes and bullet points, no matter how simple they are, I can't multitask. There's just too many things coming in because I've got a room full of people watching me, a PowerPoint up, notes, and my own like, you know, low level anxiety bubbling. It's it's too much. So relying on that messaging is key and having a coach that understood that was really nice. Yeah. And it's it's often you for me, I'm not I'm not going to memorize, but I am going to think about and go through mentally, like all the points I want to make, you know, and having a presentation helps keep on track most of the time. But it's 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 really having getting in your head. What points am I going to make? What stories am I going to tell? And doing that ahead of time is very valuable. So like I usually hopefully have have plenty of time to do it in advance. You know, let's say, you know, I'm all done in a couple of weeks ahead of time. But then during that couple of weeks, things are still coming to me. I'm still my mind is still working on the presentation oh, yeah. and, and refining it and, and, you know, noting those things that, oh, yeah, I should also talk about this, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. The more time we have, the more good ideas we can have <laughs> I like that. The other the other thing that I two other pieces of advice for people who get nervous putting themselves out there, whether with speeches or earned media or, you know, whatever it is, I think it's really important to try things so that you understand what your boundaries are. Like I did a workshop earlier in the summer and I, it was part of a bigger conference. So it was like a lot of peopling all morning. And then I, my workshop was after lunch and I knew that I needed to spend lunchtime not peopling. <laughs> So that I could like recharge from the morning and come into that workshop feeling really good. So like, I like to joke that I did not just go out to my car in the parking lot. I had to drive my car to an empty, like no, no empty cars, even around my car. Like I needed all the space to just sit and really get where I needed to be at, you know, energy wise to be able to go give that workshop. And then, you know, of course I went and it was awesome. And the rest of the day was super cool, but I wouldn't have known that if I was not really tuned into my own like need for these boundaries. Cause especially at a conference, it's really easy to feel like you need to push through and you're there to network and you paid so much money for this ticket. And like, you know what I mean? We kind of shame ourselves into needing to extrovert all the time when that's just not what's actually best for our energy levels. So definitely recommend that. Yeah. And it needs to be okay. You know, it, and I've been through that too, where you feel like, okay, well I have to, I'm going to this event. I have to just be active social the whole time. And that's not how we work, (laughs) you know, and I, I definitely learned that it's, 
it's normal to maybe take a walk by yourself where, and people do feel shamed by that and they shouldn't. I, I did, but now it's just like, you know what? This is what I need. You know, mm-hmm. I need yeah. just a, a little bit of break, just like you described. I just need a little bit of break and then I'll be, I'll be good. But you have to figure out what you need and plan for it, you know, and, and mm-hmm. maybe you are giving a speech and it's like, you know what? After I, I need a little break before I engage with, with other people, but it just, it, and it, it should be normal. And, you know, it's like we're deep thinkers. And if we haven't been able to, to do that thinking that we want, it can be very draining, you know? Yeah. And, and we got to learn how to recharge and what recharges what recharges us and how often we got to do that. Yeah. I think that's one of the hardest lessons that I've learned in adulthood is like as a kid, you know, you're all like, you're pushed towards like being out there and making friends and don't be shy. Like you're fine. You got this. And so owning that, like, no, I will be better if I just take a five minute walk by myself or go read a book in a tree or go sit in an empty car. Like I just need that quiet for my own brain. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to want to spend that time talking with people. And sometimes you're going to need a a break and it's all good. You just got to figure out what you need, not what somebody else needs. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what other advice do you have for introverts when it comes to PR? I think, you know, we've covered a lot of it. Like, I really think that it's so important to spend that time just like figuring out who you are. And what your business is like, we all know that we need to be visible to grow our businesses. If that's, if that's your world, you know, like owning a business or being an employee who wants to advance your career, either way, you've got to be visible. You've got to be out there. So finding ways to comfortably and authentically show up and share that story is really important. And I think that starts with the messaging. Like we talked about, like planning your story. What are you going to say? What points are you going to hit? And then making sure that you've got those recharge points and finding ways to share your story that aren't super draining. Like I said, I love podcasts for this because it's like building on that strength, right? Like it feels like a one-on-one conversation, but there are people listening. So that's cool. I think that's like podcasts on social media are such a natural place to start for people who are looking to professionally position themselves, use public relations to kind of advance their career, grow their business, you know, those are, those are some really nice, easy places to start that feel pretty low risk, but are still going to be high return. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about social media. So what, what introvert advice do you have there? I think it's important to be authentic to yourself. Um, especially now, like there's so much junk out there. I'm not, I'll I'm the first to admit, I'm not a super active social media user. The primary, my primary thing that I do is professional stuff on LinkedIn. And there's so much junk out there, like so much AI written stuff or like, you know, like, oh, here's how we do sales, dude. Like, no, <laughs> you know, there's, I don't, I don't have an appetite for that. I'm sure there it's right for some people, but it's not right for me that like in your face stuff. So just sharing bits, like I started really sharing like case studies and stories and opinions on strictly professional stuff to start to showcase what I know. Cause a lot of times I think as an introvert, like we're quietly working, we're quietly achieving in the corner and people might not always see how much work goes into it. Sometimes they might not even see the results of all that hard work because we're not showcasing them. So taking social media as an opportunity to really showcase those wins is a great place to start. That's, that's what I like to do with it because it's hard to toot your own horn, but if you don't do it, nobody else is going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure. We probably are not <laughs> tooting our own horn as often <laughs> as extroverts. So would you say, you know, find a, a platform or two that work for you and and not try to do everything? Oh my gosh, definitely don't try to do everything. <laughs> like in all areas of life, don't try to do everything. But, you know, when, like I mentioned, so public relations is all about building those strategic relationships with the folks who can help you achieve your goals. It's not just building relationships with any random person, right? So you want to, if you're a business owner, you're looking to advance your career, you want to think about what is my goal? Who can help me get there? And 
what do I need to do to stay top of mind with those people? So, you know, kind of thinking through that and figuring out who are those people who can help you achieve your goal and where are they? You know, if they're on LinkedIn, great, go there. If they're on TikTok, amazing, go there. Like, you know, you just got to figure out where your, where your people are because you do not need to connect with everybody. You do not need to connect with people with the biggest accounts or, you know, be in like, you don't need to be in the New York times if that doesn't align with your goals. So it's about thinking about, you know, not just building relationships willy nilly, but doing it strategically with the people who can help you. So figure out who those folks are and then go where they are, hang out, be yourself. Yeah. I think a word you said there that's really important is what are your goals? Yeah. You know, how am I going to achieve my goals? And a lot of times we think, oh, yeah, we need to be everywhere and and be seen everywhere. And it's just not the case. Like, how are you going to accomplish whatever that thing is that you want to do? You know, yeah, and be strategic about it. Absolutely. All right. Alexon, we've had a lot of good conversation here about public relations, especially for introverts. Let's call it that. What other advice do you have for introverts? I just want to say to all of your listeners that whatever your passion is, whatever like your thing is, I want to give you like a permission slip to use your voice in that area because our voices as introverts, like even though it's not our natural way to go out there and say stuff, our voices are needed because we bring a different perspective. We bring, you know, this quiet strength that you talk about. Like we, we bring this. And it is a different way of seeing the world. And if we can kind of incorporate that more into like our collective dialogue, I think that's a win-win for everybody. So it's uncomfortable. And I would never tell anybody to like push your comfort zones, but it's okay to like nudge it a little bit and just, and then you find it's not that uncomfortable there and you can nudge it a little bit more. It's, it's just kind of slowly expanding who you already are. Yeah, well said. That's beautiful. It's we have a lot of great ideas. And sometimes, and that's why I do this show, it's a matter of understanding how your brains work that we think before we speak. We need some time to think. We need some time to prepare. All of that. And you know, I say what you just said. It's not just getting out of your comfort zone, it's expanding it. Because especially I think as introverts, it's like we, if you, you're getting out of your comfort zone, but you're not changing anything, you're not changing your thinking, then you're getting out of your comfort zone over and over and over again. Whereas you do something and you change your thinking around it, then you can expand your comfort zone. And mm-hmm. that, that's so key. But like you said, introverts, we're, we're deep thinkers. We have ideas. We have new, fresh ideas and they need to be heard. But a lot of times it's getting to know your introverts introverted strengths and gifts and learning how to leverage those like we've been talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Alex, and where can people find out more about the great work you're doing? So like I said, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So you can find me there or also at my business site, which is smalladventurescommunications.com. Awesome. Thanks again. This has been a wonderful conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to further connecting with you. Reach out at david at quietandstrong.com or check out the quietandstrong.com website, which includes blog posts and links to social media channels. Send me topics or guests you would like to see on the show. If you're interested in getting to know yourself better, there's now a free TypeFinder personality assessment on the Quiet and Strong website. This free assessment will give you a brief report, including the four-letter Myers-Briggs code, and you can also have the option of purchasing the full report if you'd like to learn more. I'll add a link to the show notes. So many great things about being an introvert, and we need those to be understood. Get to know your introverted strengths and needs, and be strong.